back, chill out, enjoy sports tonight with Matthew White. He's coming live from Melbourne with plenty of racing news. I'm Jessica Rowe from the Late News team. Good night. Tonight, the long haul stops another overseas raider from running the cup. It's Cup Week, a week of pure racing and much more. <laughs> Springtime, it's when Melbourne blossoms and Flemington booms. When Australia dresses up and down, heads to the track and says, let's party. And when these amazing thoroughbreds stare down the turf and declare, let's race. From Bath to the Bookies, fashion to the Phillies. Celebrating the Melbourne Cup Carnival, Sports Tonight. Well, there are still three imports left in the field, but once again, the Melbourne Cup is proving that if the race doesn't get the international invaders, the trip to Australia normally gets them first. Well, and Marique has deteriorated in the past two days. And then all of a sudden, um... I guess the journey got through him and just recently he just hasn't been, a, um, been himself, hasn't been as, as well as we'd like. The American import was taken to Melton yesterday in an attempt to rejuvenate him, but this morning the decision was made to withdraw the gelding from the Melbourne Cup. But Amarik remains for sale and is still likely to make Australia his permanent home. We feel that the horse um, you know, would be a good candidate for here because you've got plenty of races which he would suit perfectly. So. Um, you know, we, we would hope that, you know, we can find the right person. And with Cave Tara sidelined, Tuesday's race lacks depth. The two big scratchings this week leave the Melbourne Cup lacking depth. An opinion voiced by Shane Dye. I think it does lack the class this year that it has, la uh, that it has had in previous years. But Frankie Dettori warns the international challenge is not over. While still shattered to have lost Cave Tara. Shell shock, disappointed. Uh, I've had the real chance this year to put on a good show but uh, unfortunately wasn't to be and he'll ride central park but believes another raider might yet win the cup travel mate is a uh, improving horse is well weighted at 52 and a half i think uh, is going to run a huge race well the leading jockeys in tomorrow's victoria derby say the bookmakers have it wrong they rode Shogun Lodge the horse to beat, not favourite Black Friars. The jockeys might be supporting Shane Dye, but the Melbourne public isn't jeering the controversial hoop today. With the introductions out of the way, it was time to get down to business. And today that business involved racing's Mr Controversy, Shane Dye. How have you been coping with receptions like you got this morning? Do, do they get to you at all? I'm used to it by now, down here. He brings his own fan club. What are you talking about? I've got to have a few boomy, otherwise it wouldn't be right. But what appears to be right is Shogun Lodge's chances in tomorrow's derby. The Sydney Colt traditionally travels back in the field, but his trainer Bob Thompson believes the number one barrier will give his charge a two-length start. And his rivals agreed. It surprised me to see Blackfriars ahead of Shogun Lodge as favourite because, I mean... You know, Shogun Lodge is uh, one at Group 1 level. Well, on form, probably yes, because the other day he had the 57 kilos. He never handled the track one iota, and he finished a neck behind him. Hall teams up with a George Hanlon-trained diatribe, while his good mate Frankie Dettori, the man rated the world's best jockey, is on an outsider, unlimiting. I only know that he comes from Perth, but uh, <laughs> that's about it. It's 50 to 1, what can I say? I think we do well to get a place. But while Shogun Lodge looks well suited to the wide open straight at Flemington, the one thing Shane Dye will be dreaming about tonight is good I'll weather. Have the weekend weather the details. The most prestigious event in our sporting calendar. Yet, it's beyond sport. Witness history in the making. The 1999 Melbourne Cup Carnival. Live and exclusive. Start Saturday on 10. Let's now cross to Jared Waitley at Racing Headquarters. Jared, the Derby is the first staying test for our elite three-year-olds, and it is more open than in past years.
Certainly quarters. The bookies have narrowed it down to two. Black Fries and Shogun Lodge. About two to one and three to one each. But you can get plenty of other tips. Bart Cummings has three. And as we all know, Bart doesn't muck around. Liberty Hall is probably his pick with Damien Oliver in the saddle. Mind you, just in the radio, on the, on the radio in the cab on the way out here, I heard Damien Oliver tip Black Fries in the derby. So I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. Peter Hayes has always thought Black Fries is his best chance ever to win a Victoria derby. So you have to respect that. But, you know, Shogun Lodge, it did beat Sunline three starts ago. So uh, I quite like that form line myself. Also an important day for some Melbourne Cup hopefuls. Certainly. In the McKinnon, tie the knot. He'll run favourite, of course. Uh, the McKinnon is always a good guide to the Melbourne Cup. Last year, Champagne won. And she, of course, looked like she would win the Melbourne Cup for all money with 100 to run. She ended up running second. Intergays, probably the forgotten horse in all Melbourne Cup discussions after his terrible run in the Cox Plate. He'll run. If he runs well, he will go into the Cup. A number of other Melbourne Cup chances, including a couple of other of Bart Cummings go round there. The Saab quality is the other race. The first two place getters go automatically into the Melbourne Cup. I know the horse really trying to get there is Brew, who is, uh, whose mum is Horlicks, a Japan Cup winner. So keep an eye on her as uh, Behemoth sort of struggles to make the field if we do get a Quinella there. And the Wayful Stakes is a good preview for the Oaks, and you found the winner already. Yeah, look, I reckon I found the Golden Dane, who's uh, from the Freedman Stable. It's only had six starts at its last run. It ran sixth in the 1,000 guineas. Always a good lead-up to the Oaks. This Dan Glisser will probably run favourite from the Waterhouse Stable. Shizu, the 1,000 guineas winner, she's also there. But I tell you, the 7-1 on Golden Dane, I like that, and I'll be backing the Golden Dane in the Oaks before the Wakeful tomorrow. Well, the Salinger Stakes is the big sprint race of the spring. Take us through that one. Oh, I know you like far rain in this quarters, but Toledo, he's a terrific sprinter. Uh, Magic Music, she's a mare who's going uh, better than ever in her career, formerly from the Leon Corston Sables, now with John Sadler. I must admit, I always find it very, very hard to find the winner in the Salinger. Maybe Magic Music, but she'll start favourite. As I said, you like far rain, and good luck to you. See you tomorrow at Flemington, Jared. Good on you, quarters. It's already exciting. Sure it is. Two years ago, second coming was the toast of Flemington after winning the derby, but he hasn't gone on to greatness, at least not yet. He'll be back at Flemington on Tuesday in the Melbourne Cup. The memories for Michael Moroni still linger every morning he walks onto the Flemington track. Memories of the 1997 Amy Victoria Derby. Tie the knot after second coming. The bolts are second coming a length in front. Tie the knot wearing away, but second coming's got him beat. Second coming's going to win the Amy Victoria Derby. Second it was a great day, yeah, certainly. Um, I think the, the, the memory I've got is the fact that um, I, I won the race for people that I've been training for for a while and we're all close friends, and, and I think that's the, the big thrill you get out of it. At this moment, anything was possible. As Moroni tasted the air at the top of the mountain, he dreamt his derby winner would go on, like Mahogany or Stylish Century or Red Anchor. It wouldn't be. Very frustrating. Very frustrating when you've got a horse that's won a derby and goes through the, the troughs and, and lows that he did. But he... Um, I've, I've always felt my mind he'd come back to his best. Second coming return to racing devoid of his obvious ability, more painfully devoid of his fighting qualities. Certainly we did. Uh, I was just starting to wonder how hard he was trying there for a while, but um, he's certainly back and, and racing really well. The gelding was not a shadow of his former self, struggling to run out of sight, let alone be competitive. Now the wheel has turned. Second coming has lived up to his name, winning at two of his past three starts and heading to the Melbourne Cup. It is a relief because I um, have been quoted as saying I thought he was back to his best and, um, you know, you can, you can think that, but that's still got to do it on the track. He's no longer the stable star, but come Tuesday, second coming gets his chance at redemption. And if nobody else believes in this derby winner, his trainer still dares to dream. Tie the knot wearing away, but second coming's got him beat. Jared Waitley, 10 News. And Jared has struck a bit of tipping form just at the right time. In tomorrow's feature race, the Victoria Derby, he likes number one, Shogun Lodge. His best bet is in race four, Damien Oliver's Mount Rose of Dane. And he's sticking with the inform Oliver for his lucky long shot. Race five, number seven. The Golden Day. To emphasise his ability, Dye says Shogun Lodge should replace Blackfriars as favourite for the million dollar Victoria Derby. At this time of year, the fast horse always prevails. Darren Linty, Seven Nightly News. A regular Friday night tipster, Ron Duffercy at Flemington, to talk about tomorrow's big three races.
Well, Ron Derby Day, one of the best days racing, the best three-year-olds in the land. Let's waste no time and find us a winner. I'm pretty confident with the Peter Hayes train, Black Friars, Matt. I think he's got the pedigree and the stamina to win a race like the Derby. Love the way he won last start, the way he hit the line. He'll stay all day. Of course, it's a million-dollar race over 2,500 metres. So number four is your pick. What about the placings? I thought the dangers were definitely Shogun Lodge. He's the class horse of the field. He's got superior acceleration. If it's a slowly run race, it'll play into his hands. And he has got barrier one. And the other chance is Freemason number two. He's been set for this race all along since winning the TJ Smith Group 1 in Queensland over the winter. And John Hawks will have him peaking. So four, one and two. Just recapping Ron Duffy's tips there for the big one. The Victoria Derby won last year by Arena and Larry Cassidy. Now, race seven, of course, is the McKinnon Stakes. And normally we're looking here at a Melbourne Cup form guide, but you're going away from the Cup horses in this one. Well, Ty the Knot and Intergaze have obviously been trained for two miles. They're set to peak over that distance on Tuesday, so I'm just swaying away from them. I like the, the credentials of referral. Half a million dollar race, the McKinnon number four referral. I thought the dangers could come from the New Zealander sent home. He's got a sensational record, this horse. Won two group ones at his past two starts. And for third, Northern Drake. Now, he's had a little bit of a problem, but if he's overcome that, we know how good he is. So, 4, 12 and 3 for the McKinnon. And, of course, race 8. This is a great race, isn't it? 1,200 metres, the Salinger Stakes. Yeah, it's a real scamper. I think John Size and Mick Dipp Dippman can combinate here to, uh, for John Size's first group one. That's number two. What about the placings? I thought the dangers could come from Toledo, especially if he gets a dry track. He's a real dry tracker. And an up-and-comer called Far Rain. He's only had four starts for three wins, but keep an eye on him. Two, one and six in the Salinger. OK, the best bet for the entire day. We've got eight races on the card. There's a very exciting horse in race two, a horse called Favillon, uh, a Queenslander. He's unbeaten in six attempts so far, and very, he'll make it seven out of seven, put it that way. Race two, number one, is Ron's best bet. Have a great derby day. Thanks, Matt. Good on you, Ron. There he is. Now, if you don't fancy following Ron's tip for the derby, we'll give you another one. This one, courtesy of Mark Reed. And Mark reckons the smart money is for Dyer Tribe, ridden by G. Hall, trained by George Hanlon. That's race six, number three for the derby. Sydney Racing is at Canterbury, and the selection there is Buena Vista, race two, number two for Sydney. And for Brizzy, try race one, number two. He's firm to three dollars. We think he's under the odds at that. Dyer Tribe's the best backed runner, apart from the favourite, he's $5. Shane Dyer's on board Shogun Lodge, it's $5.50 and great value. The Bart Cummings trained Cloth of Gold, well backed at $11. Freemason and Liberty Hall on the same line. Melbourne Cup favourite Tie the Knot tops our market at $2.75. He might prefer it a bit longer, but is all class. Northern Drake missed the Cox Plate and with Grant Cooksley on board, is returning $6. Jim Cassidy's mount, Oliver Twist, showing $8, was an impressive last start winner. New Zealander sent home is a real chance at $9. It's been set for this. Referrals also $9, and don't discount Intergaze or Aerosmith, both $11. Rabor at $34 has followers for the Melbourne Cup. This mightn't suit. OK, now, you wouldn't want to be losing too much coming into the Salinger Stakes. There's 16 starters. They've all got some hope. Here at Flemington again, what a wonderful course this is. Johnny Letts joins us, and of course it's VRC Derby Day tomorrow. <coughs> Let's see, it's great to be alive. <coughs> Just stop rolling for a second. And leave for Dubai. But first, mate, you've got a Melbourne Cup carnival to conquer. Yeah. How are you looking in the Amy Vars tomorrow aboard Diatram? Yeah, I, I think he's had a, a great preparation, you know. Um, I mean, the, the, the negatives are these, both these wins have been at Mooney Valley, but, but the positives are uh, they've been outstanding wins. So, uh, and he's in, uh, he's in the hands of the great man himself, George Hanlon. Can you tell us about your decision to leave for Dubai? You know, it got to a point where it was going to be that there was no... It wasn't going to happen next year, and it wasn't going to happen the year after. And, and in Europe, you, you're well accepted in your, in, from 40 to 50, which I'm 42. Here, it's not the case. And you're moving in with Frankie Dottori. How are you going to handle the step down in class? <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, I've had the luxury of, uh, since 1993, or whether you call it the luxury of it or, or his misfortune, but he's uh, the first, one of the first per people he met was me.